Hello everyone, this is Laiyosh. Welcome back to Life Study Library. Today I'm gonna be today I'm here to introduce a specific technique that is scientifically proven that you can use to overcome fear or any phobias, which can be effectively used against stuff like uh, social phobia, panic disorder, agoraphobia, obsessive compulsive disorder, PTSD, and specific phobias. So basically a huge range of fear and anxiety. And I first need you to understand that overcoming your fear does not mean making it disappear. People say stuff like, don't be scared or control your fear. The first thing to note is that you can't control your fear nor make it disappear with a snap of a finger. It's a typical way people try to overcome their fears and the success rate is much lower than they would like to admit. Your fears will most likely not going to disappear deliberately. Fears, phobias, traumas aren't something that you can uh, deliberately control or make it disappear. If you could do that, then it wouldn't be such a big problem. You can only forget your fears when it becomes unimportant or insignificant to you. So hypothetically, you can only overcome your fear of social anxiety when you get stranded on an island with nobody around you to trigger your fear. But, obvious, but obviously, you don't need to do that. And there's an easier way to overcome fears. And this technique I'm going to introduce today can do just that. Likewise, in this channel, I'm going to be talking about these interesting scientific and psychological information by implementing data from scientific studies. So if you're interested in watching this video and want to watch more of my past and my future content, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. That'll make me very, very happy. And we're going to be continuing with the video. Okay, so I'm just going to get right into it. This technique is called exposure. And a very, very brief explanation of it is, is to uh, gradually increase the intensity of the target of your fear. So for, an so for an example, if your target of fear are spiders and the eyes of, or the, the, the hairy legs or how it moves sends shiver on your spine, right? What you do by implementing exposure is to first start by looking at the English word spider. Do it with me. Write it out if you fear spiders. Or, and of course, you can do it with any other target of fear. Did you write it? Then, look at the word. Did you get scared? Just by looking at the word. Most likely, you didn't get scared just by looking at the words, right? And if you did, chances are that it only happened because the word made you imagine your target of the fear, which seems pretty self-explanatory. Well then, if that happened, put the words into Google Translate and convert it into a random language. Google an alien language translator and translate your target of fear there. Do, do it with me. Did you get anything out of the converted alien text? Probably not, because you have no attachment to the language. You wouldn't even have understood it if you didn't know the original English word. Now that you've done that, we're going to move on to the next step. And I'm just going to keep using the example of a spider for the sake of the video. Now that you've looked at the word spider, preferably in a language you don't know, now look at a cartoon image of a spider. Just two, two circles, one bigger than the other, and there are eight lines sticking out of the bigger circle. And for those of you who are detail-oriented, you can even put two dots in the small circles, representing the cartoon eyes of a spider. Now, look at the drawing you've created, and see if you feel anything. Chances are, you don't feel any fear at all because it's only a simplified image of the target. Now look at a photo of a real spider from a distance, like, a, like, at, a, like, a, like at the corner of your room. How do you feel? At this point, maybe you have some amount of fear and sweaty hands. Now look at a picture of a small spider, you know, the one that you see in houses, from a close enough distance so that you can see its legs. What do you feel? Do you feel any anxiety or fear? Is the shivering kicking in? So, okay, so at this point, you might have noticed that the key is to first start with something that barely resembles the actual target of your fear, which is why I, which is why I started with the word, right? And then gradually close the distance towards your actual image of your fear. So you first started with the word spider, and then gradually increased the intensity to, the po to a point where you were looking at a picture of an actual spider. By the time you've reached the actual picture of it, then move on to the actual object. So maybe you can do this by uh, thinking of a spider in a tightly sealed jar at the opposite end of the room. Now, this one is a real spider, but you're assured that you're still in a safe zone because the spider is in a jar. Now that you've recognized the actual spider, walk slowly towards the jar. It's still tightly sealed, so you have no danger of the spider coming out of it. Now that you're in a distance where you can actually reach and, and touch the jar, touch it and maybe even hold it in your hand and lift it. You'll see the spider moving for the first time because now it's the real spider, but you're still safe. Hold the jar for one minute 
then two minutes, then three minutes, and keep going. Okay, now you're finished. Good job. You can come out of your imagination. Although it would be better if you can actually do this with the with of with a supervision, of course. Now that you've done this, go back to the stage of this process where you first experienced fear or, or, or anxiety. Maybe you felt fear for the first time in this process when the spider first became real from a cartoon image. Or maybe you experienced fear for the first time in this process when uh, the spider was there at the corner of the room with you. Whatever stage it was, go back to it and see how you feel after experiencing all those processes. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that although you used to feel fear, because that was the first time you felt fear with, for, that, for that object, now you don't feel as much fear. Or maybe you don't feel fear at all. Voila, this is exposure. In addition, we can do the same with the fear that doesn't have a physical form. For example, social anxiety. If you fear the crowd and the attention it gives you, let's say you're preparing for a presentation or a speech, you can start out by making the audience your pets. I do this too, not really as in preparation to remem uh, remember what I have to say, because that part I've already got it but more in order to prepare myself first by having my, my dog, my audience, and then possibly my friends, and if I have the chance, multiple people who are not, who are not going to be an audience when I actually present, so like my parents or something. And another thing about exposure is that it works the, it works the other way by climbing down the ladder as well. What I mean is, the, what I mean is that Rather than starting small and finishing big, you can also start big so that the thing that actually counts doesn't seem so big of a deal. People's feelings, people's feelings get hurt when they get rejected by trying to, I don't know, like ask out an attractive person. Most of you probably experienced at least one rejection by someone you found attractive or someone who, uh, or someone who you were trying to get something out of. Well, there's this one particular experiment, a horrifying experiment, done with a bunch of college students who were tasked to go to a bar and try to hit on people, as many people as possible. And the person who got rejected the most won a prize money. In order to win the prize, these college students came up with these insane pickup lines like... Uh, I expect you to be waiting for me in the, in the bed naked or with a, with the lingerie. They said stuff like this to people they've never met. And of course, they got rejected hard. But the city also showed that these college students, the more they got rejected, the less the less nervous they got when they were actually trying to hit on someone. So you see my point, right? So the important thing to remember is that when you practice exposure on a regular basis, by the time when you actually do whatever activity you're attempting, you'll most likely feel the emotion of, compared to what I did before, this is nothing. When you feel this feeling, you've successfully proceeded through all the steps of exposure. People say stuff like, you should experience failure early on in your life so that you know what it feels like and you can prepare against it. This advice is actually pretty solid. The bar experiment is a, is a perfect example of this, and essentially a perfect example of the technique exposure. Of course, there's nothing more important than the actual preparation and practice for the material, so stuff like actually studying for the test, or actually remembering and practicing your speech. These are your number one endeavors in order to come out successful at these. But stage fights and these other sudden glitches are a major problem indeed and an annoying occurrence. This video was intended to show you that these glitches are pretty easy to solve. So don't let yourself fail miserably because of things like these. And in order to not succumb to these glitches, in this video I've shown you exposure. A pretty easy technique you, know, you can acquire quickly in order to successfully overcome your fear. And that was pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching. And now I have for you the book recommendation for today. Today's book is called The Clinician's Guide to Exposure Therapies for Anxiety Spectrum Disorders, Integrating Techniques and Applications from CBT, DBT, 
and ACT by Timothy A. Sizemore. Although this exposure therapy is widely considered as one of the most effective therapy treatments, it is often not fully understood or misinterpreted due to a lack of understanding on either the professional side or the patient's side, sometimes both. This occurrence, you might imagine, is really, really, really wasteful. It's like having your own coffee machine but never using it to make coffee because you don't know how to operate it. So, in order to solve this issue, the author of this book guides us with detailed instructions and strategies and solutions to learn and implement exposure therapy. It also connects this with other types of therapies like uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, and acceptance and commitment therapy, ACT. And to put a cherry on top, this book also has worksheets at your disposal to help you figure out what kind of specific therapy is right for you. And you can use these worksheets for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The only problem is that if you look at this book on Amazon, it's uh, pretty expensive for a book. So I recommend either getting it from a public library or buying a used one. Or actually, let's look at other online shops and see if there's any cheaper options because I'm not going to allow you to buy books that cost this much. Okay, I found one that you can you can uh, rent for $22. That was just a, that was just a quick Google search, but it seems like at this moment this is the cheapest option. I'll put a link to this website on my description below, so uh, don't blink and get it fast like like right now. And I think that's it for this video. I sincerely apologize for delaying this video for so long. I had an emergency that abruptly came up and couldn't really work on my videos for a considerable amount of time. But now I'm back on gear, revving at full throttle if you know the reference. And lastly, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Life Study Library so that you can watch my other past videos and keep up with all my future content. This has been your host, Lai Yosh, and I'll see you in another video. Bye!